And this is just a really quick game rig. Increase the visibility here on this phone so we can see this. I've got a wrist twist bone in here, and I've also got a bicep twist bone. And they're both being held with IK chains pointing here at the elbow. And uh, this is an FK uh, arm. But I'm just going to show you just some examples of uh, different stuff that you can do with animation. I can, uh, I can rotate this bone. And of course, on this axis here, no rotation. And I've changed my, uh, the axis of my bone. I can also change my rotation order so that um, the, uh, the flipping is going to occur here on this axis. But on this axis, of course, your range of motion here is not very, uh, is not very large. So the character is never going to move in this uh, in this axis enough to make the bones flip, but uh, but I can you know I can make the bones flip. So you can uh, change your axis order or move everything around, meaning move your uh, rotation axis of the bone itself uh, to avoid that kind of stuff. And that's kind of just how this is set up. So you just have a, a a quick idea of how it was done. I have some bones in here that I don't really want to keep. For instance, if your exporter is looking for the uh, the node type, then um, the bones you know may export as part of the skeleton. And you might mark them in a specific way. You might mark them by their names or by uh, some kind of ID or something like that. But if it's looking for a node type for the bones, we can come in and um, change that really quickly. For instance, I'm going to come in here to um, my graph editor and I'm going to open up a scene tree graph. And this is actually just a track view that has been configured and customized. So you can come into your track views and you can change the layouts. I've saved one here for a scene tree, but you can also come in and uh, change all your toolbars and get rid of keys in the animation and just use this to navigate in your scene, cut and paste properties and controllers and that kind of stuff. So, uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm just going to come in here to the, um, this object here that is the point in the wrist. And um, I'm going to uh, open this back up. And we're going to look at it at the object level. So at the object level, I have the, the wrist bone, which is this one. And I'm going to copy it. And now I'm going to come in and grab this. And this is my wrist twist. And at the object level, it's a bone. So I'm just going to paste it. Now it's a point helper. You can see here in the modifier stack that it actually is. I'm going to grab this one here, and I'm going to paste this as well. So you can go and replace objects at property, lev uh, at property levels. If you have uh, dummy objects that you set up for lights in parts of a level, and you merge those in to build a level, and then you want to actually make them into lights, you can select them all and then replace them at the object level properties with a light, and then you'll have lights in every instance of where those dummy objects used to be. So if you're using um, hard points or things like that, then that's a really cool technique to, to replace them all really quickly. Another thing that I want to show is uh, being able to go and visualize trajectories. So first what I'm going to do is I have some animation in this uh, file here. And I'm just going to come in here and just do a file new. And uh, we'll say keep objects in hierarchy. And now what that does is just ditch my animation. So now I don't have any more animation in this uh, in this arm, and I'm going to go ahead and set it up uh, a little bit differently, uh, just to show some different examples for different things. In this case, now I have some IK. And uh, if we just pop in some motion in here, we'll just, I just want to be able to see. Now you can see that I've got something going on here. Um, you can show your ghosting in Max. A lot of people don't know about ghosting. Ghosting is available through um, your views here. So if we turn on show ghosting uh, and select an object in the scene, in this case, now I can see this happening. So as you're working on animation, you want to be able to see your ghosting in the viewport. That's really helpful as well. And Another thing that's really helpful is being able to go into your trajectories and visualize your trajectories. So like for this ob particular object, I can come in into my properties here, and I can turn them off of by layer and turn on my trajectory. And I can see that trajectory. I can also go into the sub-object sub level here to the keys for that trajectory, and uh, I can select those and I can move them. So here you can see I can change the motion 
and I can come into those keys and go into their properties and adjust their properties as well. So this is really useful. And then once I've got everything that I want, I can come in here and um, grab all of these bones and come in and say that I want to collapse them. So in this case, I'm just going to collapse all this animation. And that's not what I really want to do. I want to come in here and change my samples up a little bit more. And so now I've baked all this animation in here. If we come in here and turn off our, uh, our IK chain helpers as a filter and just grab these and hit delete. Now you see I still have all my animation that I've created with the IK but I've baked it into the chain. So this allows me to, uh, to export this into a game engine that will allow me to only have keys. And uh, you also have the ability to come in here and collapse controllers. So if we have a controller, let's say here, um, I can come into collapse controller here and collapse actually into a new layer if I want to. So if you have some motion capture and you want to, uh, to make changes to it, collapse that into a new layer and then start adding you know, path controls or things like that, you can do that that way as well. So let's take a look at one more technique before we finish. And, um, and that is a combination of some of the things that we've seen here today. Um, I'm going to open up a new file and we'll go in and get this one. Now this is just a technique. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas. It's not really a, uh, let's go in here and grab this. Put my back on my all. You see I've got a look at here that's controlling his eyes. But what's actually happening here is this is his eye geometry. He doesn't have uh, any spheres in his eyes. He doesn't have any, uh, his eyes aren't even separate objects. They're still part of his face. These are just selected faces that have UV uh, modifiers on them. And the UV modifiers are rotating around. They're looking at the target. So what, what's going on here is we've been able, we've come in here to the object level here. And instead of copying the properties at the object level from object to object, I actually copied the controller. So I have a bone in his head, and the bone in his head is looking at the look at target so that this IK will actually work in real time, not just here in Max, because uh, the transforms for the UV gizmos are uh, exportable through our SDK. So we have a bone in his head that's looking around, and eyelids can be skinned to it or whatever. And now we have the, uh, the UV gizmos. The controllers for the UV gizmos are actually or a, uh, an orientation constraint that's constrained to that bone that's looking around. So, uh, so that bone that's looking around in here is driving both of these two gizmos. The way that you get an orientation constraint on a gizmo, you can just come in here and uh, say in here that you want to assign a controller, but then you're not going to be able to adjust any of the parameters for it because uh, you can't actually select the gizmo in the scene and pull up all the parameters in the motion panel. So what I did was I just assigned it to something else and then copied it to, uh, to these channels here. So copied it to the gizmo channels for rotation. And now I have uh, this. One thing too that you'll also notice is that he's got vertex colors. The map